Hello, hello. I'm Ferris O'Brien. I own the Spy radio station. Thanks. <laughs> um, but, uh, this, this is not my skill set here. I'll go ahead and throw this out there. I'm, I'm used to, I'm actually used to kind of being like this for the most part where people hear me but don't ever see me. That's where I feel normal. So we'll kind of just, we'll start off there. But just, just in case you don't know, the spies in pretty much the, the last independently owned and operated radio station here in the U.S., uh, worldwide, really. Um, most radio stations or conglomerates these days, uh, that's one of the things that, that, that led to the, the spy has had many incarnations. This is actually its, its third resurrection, if you will, from the ashes. Hopefully it's last. Um, and part of the reason that I think that, that uh, the spy has gotten... Uh, where it's gotten is because of how we've positioned it as a radio station. We're not just looking to do what most radio stations, television stations, uh, newspapers, any, any, kind of, any kind of form media does, and that's motivate us through the bottom line. I know that everyone needs to make money, everyone needs to have a living, and that's, that, that's great and all, but my take on it is, is just a little bit different. If you do things because you want to and you're passionate about them, then that other stuff will, will come along. Part, part, part of the things, we, we've, we've had s several different uh, articles done, um, different kinds of ads that have run. We've had, uh, we're the only radio station to ever grace the cover of the Gazette, which is kind of cool, I think. Um, but that's just that, that's just kind of who I am and what the spy is. Just in case, just in case you uh, don't know, one one of the things in uh, branding was taking uh, the spy was originally in Stillwater. Um, a lot of people think of radio stations and they think of the frequency, the number where you find them: ninety three seven, ninety one seven, eight ninety eight nine, one zero two seven, one zero seven seven. Those aren't actually the radio station. Um, that's just their location. Um, that's where you can find them. And it used to be the only place you could find them. When I first uh, got into radio, uh, th that, was, that was it. There was really no other place to find them other than on the dial. Um, there wasn't a uh, website. There wasn't uh, streaming online. There wasn't television or video or any of that stuff that went with uh, uh, some, some online entities or media entities these days. You didn't have any of that stuff. But, but one of the things that The Spy did when I first uh, acquired it in 2009 um, was we had to make the transition from a uh, terrestrial station into a new realm that had um, gone through different uh, uh, forms of, of, of different frequencies, um, different uh, companies, different ownership, different DJs, different programming. The Spy's always been kind of a, a new music, an alternative format. Really, the the whole uh, radio stations are, are classified as, in genres where uh, you know you play rock, you play country, you play pop, you you, you know whatever. Um, Spy has always pretty much been an alternative station, at least since I've been involved with it. Uh, one of one of the things as far as as far as branding something, I f like the simplicity of identification in whatever it is. I mean, once you've, once you've established what you are and who you are, then you need to have that kind of visual connection, that, that kind of visual, oh yeah, I, I know that. And I think that but one, one of the things when The Spy came from, from Stillwater, its original location, to Oklahoma City, we did a big thing that's really kind of a, a, an unheard of thing to do in radio, and that's, we went from 93.7 to 105.3. Um, that's a big jump on the dial. Um, that's a whole new branding scheme right there. 
But the one thing that uh, when I was brought from Stillwater to Oklahoma City, one of the things that uh, uh, we did was, was try and reconfigure the old logo. I think logos are important in your branding. It kind of tells everyone kind of who you are, what you are, what you do. And it's, again, it's that visual kind of identification as to what you are. One of the things on the original um, spy logo, which is the top left one, um, that I always found appealing in it, and one of the things that always came front in mind when I thought about the spy, other than it's a radio station, it plays cool music, um, the DJs sound like they really like the records they're playing, is the eyes. Um, the eyes always kind of always kind of meant the spy to me. So when we, myself and, and another guy, started to rework the 105.3, we kind of de-emphasized the frequency and through a couple of trials and, and tribulations, we, we came up with those eyes and then the different incarnations of the spy logo since. We've, we've always tried to make the, the eyes the most identifiable thing with the Spire, at least since I've, since I've owned it. This was, this was the first 105.3 logo, and it came down to this one, and then this one. And our recent partnership with uh, KOSU has also did something again. We went uh, from 105.3 to now 91.7 in Oklahoma City and 107.5 in Tulsa. So we've changed frequencies yet again, but... And we've actually done away with the name Spy, but we've kept the I's and, and the font of the S. And still, it's, it's identifiable, I, th I think, where you can kind of see them. Well, one of the things that, that always kept me, or, or kept me in with, with the, the branding of the look was the simplicity of it. A lot of the things that I learned in this business, the, my first job was at the original Edge in Dallas. One of the things I loved about the Edge was its bumper stick or its bumper strip. <clears throat> it's very simple. Um, you can't mistake where it is and what it is. And uh, I, I, I've always loved that logo. Um, and I tried to incorporate that in my logo. Um, it's just, it's just kind of you know, what it is. And one of the things that the Edge did also with its logo, it never changed, but we would adapt the colors. Um, we would change the background, change the little triangle at the top, uh, color the V, color the D, uh, different kinds of things. And we've, again, I've implemented that with the Spy. We've, gone from, we've had blue and orange and pink. <clears throat> Eventually, you can do things like we used to do uh, at the Edge in Dallas around Christmas time. You'd go to a, a green and red font or green for St. Patrick's Day. Uh, any, 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 anything uh, like that that would, that would make an obvious kind of sense or you know, hang a wreath on it or something for Christmas. Um, I still think that uh, part of the, the thing with the spy was... was telling people um, in our transition from 105.3, because there, there was a, a year-long gap between <clears throat> going from the frequency, the terrestrial radio of, of 105.3 FM to the KOSU uh, brand. One of the things that happened was we lost the 105.3 frequency, which Several radio stations, several well-known radio stations, WOXY in Cincinnati, uh, uh, Indy 103 in Los Angeles, much uh, bigger markets than here had tried and failed at going or trying to make that transition from terrestrial radio to a web-based radio station before. Um, when we were, it was evident that we were going to lose our bid to acquire 105.3. We all kind of looped together, a lot of help from Brian Winkler, great friend, great guy, um, kind, of, kind of funny, or he sees himself as being funny. Um, <laughs> and he uh, uh, really helped with this campaign 
coming off the 105.3 to the web only. Again, we're changing addresses on people. That's not the, that's not, wasn't really the important thing. The important thing was to keep the logo consistent. My biggest worry was people would perceive us as different. At that time, uh, and again, this was at the end of 2010, um, you know, internet radio was kind of seen as kind of a, uh, what is it? It's a destination kind of thing. You can't just stumble across it. You have to go to it. Um, whereas before, a terrestrial or a, a normal terrestrial radio station on a receiver, you can play with the dial and kind of stumble across things. And that's how a lot of uh, listeners were gathered to radio stations previous. Well, one of the things that, or one of the challenges in keeping the spy brand strong and keeping the spy brand recognizable and keeping the spy brand front and center was to tell people we're not internet radio, we're not web-based radio, we are a radio station. And it was, it was challenging. Um, it was still at that point where all of a sudden smartphones and Bluetooth and, and cars weren't so, weren't so much enemies. They were more, um, it, it, was, it was a much easier transition than when the other stations in the bigger markets tried to go or tried to make that transition from terrestrial to web-based. We had a little bit easier of roads, but still at the end of 2010, there were still some extra steps you had to take to get an internet radio station in your car. You couldn't just go in and you had to, you know, hook some stuff up or maybe even plug something in. But the big thing for us was to establish that brand, let everyone know that we're, we are a radio station. We're still a radio station. We've always been a radio station. And we did that with the iSpy campaign. And it was just really kind of drawing people in to like who listened, who they were. Uh, Doug Schwartz did all the photography for uh, the ads. We had listeners uh, come in and do stuff. Uh, you know, obviously Brian did one. Uh, Lacey was a DJ for us at the time. Um, but uh, we had some local politicians. Uh, uh, we had a big party at uh, Speakeasy and invited listeners out, and they submitted their, their little I Spy campaign things. And we turned those in, and we ran them in the Gazette and several other, uh, I think, uh, uh, publications and whatnot, and then had them posted in several different places. I think that really helped uh, establish or, or reestablish that whole brand thing of, of, of what we were and um, continued on when we kind of solidified a little bit more of what we were. We have 16 specialty shows, have like 22 people that work for me. Um, and some of the different, different shows that we have, again, it's modeled after uh, just old FM stations of having specialty shows outside of the format, but that's a lot of what has established who we are within the brand and uh, uh, different things, whether it's uh, a comedy talk show, no fun intended, or a vinyl only show. Oklahoma Rock Show is two hours of local music. Uh, Freak Beat is, you know, psych and garage. We also have a reggae show and uh, a rockabilly show, a punk show, post-punk show. <clears throat> they're all there. They're all genre, or they're all interrelated in the main genre of the radio station. But again, it just establishes uh, who the spy is, what we do, um, our local personalities. We actually, all these people actually live here, one sitting right there. Um, and uh, it, it, it just, it, it helps kind of reestablish. Re I mean, I think that's one of the things that that's also sets the brand apart is the, the localness of, of what we are and what, and what we do, that our DJs are here and we do things. And we've also taken... Uh, the, the logo to make it <clears throat> easily adaptable to other things. Uh, Nathan Poppy is going to be doing one here later on today, but this is also one of the, one of the things that we've used to help brand. Um, it's uh, V-Dub Sessions. It's local bands that get into the, our bus and play a song as we drive around and we film them. Uh, it helps 
draw together uh, the different uh, incarnations of, of what we do. It's one, it's one of the important things in the branding is like finding people that have similar goals, similar views as you do. Fowler Volkswagen was an obvious one uh, for us. We, ha we now have the two buses. Um, we also have the t-shirts that Tree and Leaf does. Um, it, again, it's, the logo is what it is. I think it's, it's identifiable. I think you see the eyes at this point um, and you kind of know what's coming. But it also uh, you know, makes it where we can cartoon it up a bit, um, and, but you still get it. It's more, more driven. Or like the, the recent uh, Gentleman of the Road tour in Guthrie, we basically took the logo and just put a mustache on it. So, um, but it's still you know, kind, of the, kind of the same thing. One of the things that, that we've learned with uh, is how, how being different helps us uh, establish our brand. Being different, what I touched on earlier about most radio stations are corporate and uh, their shows. Chances are if you're a DJ on a radio station, chances are that DJ is not here. They're in a different market. Um, they may not even be a real DJ. Um, there's, <laughs> it could be syndicated, uh, and all those, you know, it could be just a, a syndicated show that's, that's heard on many different stations, or it could be uh, syndication in that this person does afternoons on this station and 2,000 other stations nationwide. One of the things with The Spy is that we've really driven home that we're local, we're independent, and all the people that you hear are actually here. Um, if you want to see us out, we're out. Um, that you know that kind of thing. And that's the part part of the thing that we that we've learned in that is is the localness, kind of being a part of the city. I don't think the transition would have gone as well as it did if it wasn't for the people um, here in Oklahoma City. They would not let us go away. Um, they kept listening, they kept supporting, they kept coming out to our events. Um, and we took that all into account um, in you know, not only programming, um, but where we went, who we partnered with, um, and, and things of, of you know, similar, similar type things. I'd like to think that our new partnership with KOSU is kind of the last step in reestablishing that, yes, we are still a 24-7 web-based radio station, um, but we also have content, and we also have a large number of content that's also on a terrestrial radio station that pretty much covers southern Kansas to southern Missouri, pretty much all of Oklahoma down almost to uh, Thackerville. So it's, we have... We have that, but uh, we're also the, the web-based station. <clears throat> I guess when, when it comes to, uh, back to uh, tips that I can give you for branding that I think that, that will help is, like I said, partner with someone that has similar goals as you do, whatever it is. Know who you are. Um, know what you are. Um, one of the things that, that I always try and tell everyone is when someone comes up to you and asks you, you know, what is the spy? Be prepared to, to tell them something. Um, don't just say we're a cool radio station. <laughs> um, but when you partner with someone with similar goals as you do, that way you help them, they help you. It's, a, it's kind of a... a, a a partnership that, that works for both you and, and them. <clears throat> that also can, can lead to other partnerships of, of similar uh, type beneficial situations. Um, also, you want to uh, maybe find someone that is within the same ranks as you, uh, maybe has done something that you're doing, um, whether it's a flower shop or a, a suit shop, a sneaker shop, um, whether you do uh, landscaping or concrete work or whatever it is, there's someone that you know or someone that, that maybe you can ask questions to, bounce 
ideas off of, try and figure out what they've done, learn from them a bit, a mentor, so to speak. Um, and I think that all helps in just kind of establishing who you are, you know, know, know who you are, know what you are, figure out how you want to be perceived by the public, come up with a logo, be simplistic with it, um, find a mentor, ask questions, and uh, just, you know, persevere, go through it all, succeed. It's good stuff. And it's fun. And that's, that's part of it, too, is just to, just to have fun with it. I think that's it.